This is SSP TV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. Back to School Week continues on SSP TV News. We'll find out how classes are going at another school in our area. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Lisa Sugart sitting in for Ken Cara. But first, we begin with an emergency declaration as remnants of Ida hit our area. Governor Tom Wolf today signed a proclamation of disaster emergency in anticipation of significant rainfall and widespread flooding expected from what is now Tropical Depression Ida. If you do have to go out, visit 511pa.com for the very latest conditions and travel delay warnings. We'll also post updated information on our SSP TV Facebook page. Well, tonight we continue our Back to School Week features, tonight with Holy Family Academy in Hazleton. The students have returned to Holy Family Academy School in Hazleton. I am pleased to be joined by their principal, Mr. Jason Tribbett. Mr. Trivet, how is it going? A brand new school year and hopefully things can slowly get back to normal. Uh, it's, it's exciting to be back to school. Um, you know, I, it's, it's nice to see the excitement uh, on the students' faces. Uh, you know, even the parents are excited to have the kids out of the house and, and, and back to school. And uh, the start of the new, a new school year is always exciting and, and fun. And, uh, you know, it's, it's one of the best uh, parts of the job, seeing all those, the, those young faces uh, walk into the school all excited. Uh, to be back with their friends and their classmates and, and ready to uh, have a great year. So we're, we're, we're glad to be back. So now when you went back this year, what, I guess, protocols are in place? Are students wearing masks? What changes have you had to made, uh, make because of COVID? Sure, sure. Um, so masks will be uh, required once again as, as we begin this new school year. Um, the diocese is going to continue to monitor the, the transition rates uh, within our county and, and within our area. And um, if transmission rates drop to a, a lower level, potentially we could go back to masks being optional. Uh, but right now, uh, where we're at, uh, the diocese feels that masks are our safest option and uh, give our, our students and, and our staff uh, the best opportunity to be in person uh, for the entire school year. So we're, we're right now we're, we're mask, mask uh, required. And, uh, you know, last year, be, going through it all of last year, uh, our students really did a great job with it last year. Um, those younger kids, it didn't bother them one bit. And, and I'm anticipating this year to be uh, in a similar position with that. You are solely in person this year. There will be no online teaching. Correct. Yeah, we're, we're all 100% in person. Um, last year, the diocese did offer a virtual academy for our students, which uh, we did have some students that took advantage of that. Uh, but this year, all of our students are, are in person and uh, here in school. And uh, actually, our enrollment uh, increased uh, this year uh, by almost 50 students. Um, so we know that uh, our community um, it wants to get back to normal. They want their kids back in school in person, and uh, we're excited to have them back. That's wonderful that so many new students. So for people not familiar with the school, it is pre-K through eighth grade, is that correct? Correct, yeah, we're pre-K through eighth grade. Um, we're one uh, section per grade um, and our average class size is around uh, 25 students. So you're hoping though that activities will be able to resume at some point as well, but you're gonna take it slowly. We are, yeah, we're gonna take it slowly to start the year and see how it goes, but uh, it's my hope that we can get back to some of our normal things, uh, our normal, uh, you know, the Christmas shows, the, uh, you know, even uh, we had parent-teacher conferences virtually last year. I'd love to get the, you know, the parents back into the building for a one-on-one face-to-face parent-teacher conference. Uh, you know, the back-to-school night that uh, we weren't able to have last year. We're gonna have to play those by ear and see, uh, you know, how it goes as the, as the year progresses. And uh, it's my hope though that, uh, you know, we can return to normal, give these kids some uh, some normalcy back and, and have those assemblies, have the, the appearances by uh, uh, presenters that come into our school, uh, go back to having some field trips at the end of the year. You know, I'm hopeful that we can continue to do those as the year progresses. 
And are you still required to do social distancing in the classroom? Yes, so we, we are. We're going to, we, right now we have our desks at a minimum of three feet in the classrooms. Um, some of our classrooms with bigger spaces, we were able to get the desks to, uh, to six feet, but our minimum is three feet in the classroom. Uh, for lunches, we're going to be at six feet. And uh, with that, we had to do some uh, rearranging. We're not going to be in our cafeteria because we just don't have a big enough space for our students. So we're going to be serving lunches in our gym and make that our makeshift cafeteria. But, you know, as most schools have done throughout the last uh, a couple of years, you have to be flexible. You have to adjust. And uh, we're, we're, we're right there with them. We're, we're trying to make things work for our families, for our students. And, um, you know, it's, it's a small price to pay to be here in person to offer in-person instruction. Lastly, if someone still wants to enroll, is it too late for this year? Most of our grades, oh, we do have a waiting list because we're at our capacity, but we do have some room uh, in, in kindergarten. Uh, we have some room in second grade uh, and eighth grade. Those are the three grades that we do have some openings. Uh, but some of our grades, because we're social distancing, we did have to, to limit uh, and set a maximum number for, for our classroom space. So, uh, but kindergarten, second grade, eighth grade, uh, we do have some openings left. Today's news feature is brought to you by Feisner's Ford in Freeland, who is celebrating 75 years in business. Give them a call at 570-636-3920, or you can log on to FeistnersFord.com. Time now for weather on SSPTV News. From the National Weather Service, Thursday will be mostly sunny, high near 69. Thursday night, mostly clear, low near 49. Friday, mostly sunny, high near 67. Friday night, partly cloudy, with a low around 50. And for the weekend, Saturday, sunny, high near 70. Saturday night, partly cloudy, with a low around 57. And on Sunday, mostly cloudy, with a high near 70. Sunday night, mostly cloudy, low near 57. The weather is brought to you by Valley High Food Drive-In in West Hazleton. They're open Monday through Friday from 11.30 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. For their hours and more information, find them on Facebook. The Laurel Mall Labor Day sidewalk sale will be held from September 3rd through September 6th. For more information, you can call the mall at 570-454-2100. And that's today's Talk of the Town. SPTV News would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Stephen R. Mike Butcher of Hazleton, the Joseph B. Conahan Funeral Home, will announce the arrangements. James Corr of Weatherly, a graveside service will be held on Saturday at 11 a.m. at St. Nicholas Cemetery in Weatherly. The Joseph B. Conahan Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Andre J. Cressman, age 87, formerly of West Hazleton, no services have been announced. Veronica Ronnie Cressman, age 89, formerly of West Hazleton, no services have been announced. Judith Paisley of Hazleton, a service will be held on Thursday at 8 p.m. at the Joseph B. Conahan Funeral Home. Friends will be called on Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. at the funeral home. Mary L. Payne, age 89, of Elizabethtown, a service will be held on Saturday at 10 a.m. at the Joseph A. Moran Funeral Home. Friends will be called on Saturday from 9 to 10 a.m. at the funeral home. Richard J. Perry, age 74, of Portage, services will be private. Dolores C. Thomas of Hazel Township, Mass will be held on Friday at 10 a.m. at St. Anne's Church. The McKee Wilczek Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. And James John Yurkovich, Sr., 869 of Hazleton, services will be private under the Salone Funeral Home. Tonight's obituaries are being brought to you in part by Harmon Funeral Homes and Crematory, with two locations in Rockland and in Drums, 570-384-3312 or 570-788-0977. And go to HarmonFuneral.com. Coming up, we'll preview the latest episode of Hear Better, Live Better right here on SSPTV News.